Welcome to On Texas Football, special edition, a little Saturday scrimmage afternoon uh, discussion. Uh, Jerry and CJ, I'm doing this solo because Jerry and CJ are actually uh, in Austin right now talking to recruits. Uh, we'll have more on recruiting uh, le later this evening or early tomorrow morning, or of course, you can watch us or, or get it, uh, the latest info on ontexasfootball.com as well. Uh, but uh, big scrimmage, uh, last one before the spring game, uh, actually for the Longhorns, have some news and notes. Uh, from people that were on hand uh, that uh, watched it. Uh, a lot of high school coaches uh, in Austin today, recruits as well, uh, taking in the festivities. Uh, let's start with some of the highlights. Jonte Cook, the wide receiver from DeSoto, uh, started uh, in this scrimmage with the ones for the Longhorns. Uh, he had the first touchdown catch uh, and first touchdown of the scrimmage itself. Uh, Manny Mohamed, another sophomore, uh, he from South Oak Cliff, had the scrimmages, uh, one of the scrimmages, uh, interceptions off of Arch Manning. He played extremely well, I'm told, uh, today as well. There were a couple of injuries at times, but nothing major. Sadir Mitchell uh, emerging with a uh, ice pack on a shoulder, but it didn't look like it was serious. Uh, other things that, that went on, no major injuries uh, that were recorded. Uh, probably the biggest thing of the day, uh, and what I was uh, told is the quarterback play, Quinn Ewers had a spectacular outing, uh, but uh, at times, the receivers did not step up and make plays for him. I mean, there were a couple of throws, apparently, that were right on the money that just didn't uh, connect for whatever reason. Uh, the thought being, uh, the receivers still have a ways to go. Uh, right now, they are well behind, uh, I would say. Well behind is maybe a little too harsh, but they're behind where they were a year ago, which makes a lot of sense, given that Xavier Worthy and uh, Adonai Mitchell may be uh, first-round draft picks. Uh, but talking about that, uh, I would add this uh, to folks uh, that are interested. Uh, the first three receivers uh, starting for the Longhorns today apparently were not only Jonte Cook uh, and Isaiah Bond, but DeAndre Moore uh, was the third wide receiver. Uh, Cedric Baxter and Jaden Blue split time with the reps at the ones. Uh, Blue played a lot in the slot. Uh, so did Trey Wisner, uh, apparently. Uh, Texas and uh, Steve Sarkeesian getting all those guys reps. Uh, Juan Davis, uh, seeing a lot of time at tight end, as well as Amari Nyblack and uh, Gunnar Helm, uh, too. I will say this. I mentioned Ewers had a really good day. There were those that thought that Arch Manning did not have a great day. Uh, the uh, true, uh, the redshirt freshman from New Orleans uh, had, you know, was not getting the ball out, Had a was sacked a couple of times uh, and not getting the ball away. Uh, but maybe that's because of this. Uh, here's what I'm being told right now. The first team offensive line is uh, absolutely dominating the first team defensive line, especially the interior. Uh, the, uh, for instance, uh, one zone play on the interior, Texas walked in, the running back walked in uh, completely untouched uh, on, on the first team offensive line unit on a two yard inside zone run in the red zone. Um, the, the interior D line has got some work ahead of it. Now, yes, we suspect that Texas is going to be very strong with the first team deep offensive line in comparison to the defensive line. The one thing I would add to that is Colin Simmons, uh, from a pass rush pers perspective, working with some with the twos, really showed extremely well at times again today. Um, that's a, a name that uh, keeps coming up. Uh, the young freshman out of uh, Duncanville uh, looking better and better. Jaden Blue uh, continues to be one of the, the highlights of the offense. Uh, he is the guy that, uh, you know, it, it, according to one observer, he's the one that scares you if you're an opposing defensive team. A couple other news and notes uh, that were needed. Uh, again, the interior of the defensive line has some work ahead of him. Uh, so uh, especially the first unit got pushed around quite a bit, apparently. Uh, then uh, I would say also uh, the thing that uh, I would uh, mention here uh, is Trey Weisner also played a little bit in the slot. Another guy that, that uh, was a difference maker uh, was Anthony Hill. All right, that, that's going to do it for just about all of the, the comments that I got. Uh, the offense did look better later in the scrimmage, uh, and the receivers looked a little bit better. Not much mention of Ryan Wingo today, which I found in interesting. Uh, probably the biggest news, though, for me, uh, the top three receivers today on, on the starting receivers, at least in the rotation, or Isaiah Bond, DeAndre Moore, and Jonte Cook. I wasn't un, I wasn't sure exactly where uh, DeAndre Moore or Matthew Golden how they were playing that. 
but when they went three wides, uh, Moore was the first one in with Cook uh, and Isaiah Bond. Uh, when I talked about uh, some guys that were looking good, they also mentioned Jalen Gilbo, uh, the defensive back uh, out of Port Arthur, uh, has continued to look good in spots. Uh, one of the things I was told, uh, again, is that uh, because of because the, the receivers are a little bit different than last year when Adon, Adonai Mitchell and Xavier Worthy were there, they're squeezing the corners a little bit more against these receivers and able to do it. And they got some guys blown up a little bit today uh, at receiver uh, because of that. And so uh, the cornerbacks playing a little bit tighter. Jerry Hamilton mentioned that he had heard that was going to happen, uh, and it has been happening apparently. Uh, so that's good news as well. As far as recruiting is, oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention all this. This happened inside DKR. Uh, Texas uh, had a, a, a scrimmage inside DKR where all the recruits went in, uh, that kind of stuff. A couple of guys that showed up that we weren't aware were coming, one of, went, one of whom uh, is Caleb Chester, a cornerback out of Fort Bend Marshall. Uh, he's got, uh, he just released his top five. He does have a scholarship offer from the Longhorns. Uh, we'll get more on that to, for you, but uh, he put he released a top five and Texas was in it. Jackson uh, Christian, uh, offensive lineman out of Port Natchez, uh, was there. Port Natchez Groves uh, was in town, as well as Coyote Armstrong, uh, the tight end out of Jasper. All of those guys, 2025s that had offers. And then we had a host of 2026 uh, guys uh, in as well. We're waiting to see whether or not Texas has offered uh, Will Griffin, the Tampa quarterback, uh, that came in. It's his second or third trip uh, to Austin as well. Longhorns have not offered many quarterbacks in the 2026 recruiting class. Uh, alongside that, there was another tight end in. It's been in three times now, I think, uh, in the last couple of weeks uh, uh, out of uh, the uh, Austin area. Several different recruits uh, on campus uh, alongside this. Uh, so long story short, no major injuries today. Jonte Cook, the first touchdown. Manny Muhammad, uh, a big uh, a big interception. Uh, Quinn Ewers uh, cementing himself as uh, one of the better quarterbacks that Texas has had in a long, long time. Uh, Arch Manning needing a little work a, a bit today. The offensive line, the first team offensive line dominating the interior uh, of the uh, first team defense, uh, I am told, while the second team defense actually got the better of the second team offensive line at times today, which I think could be Part of the issue as it relates uh, to uh, uh, Arch Manning and him having some issues. All right, that's going to do it. Special edition. I just want to give you all a quick update on what happened uh, this afternoon in uh, DKR uh, Longhorns. CJ and Jerry will have more on recruiting later uh, for uh, all of us uh, here at On Texas Football. Hope you guys are having a nice weekend and hook them.